Hello and welcome back to my craft room. Well, apparently, Jen in our Discord community tells me it's actually National Mending Day today or Repair Day. Hang on a sec, I need to look that up now. Wait a minute, bear with. Good job I checked. It's actually International Repair Day, <laughs> which I think is a lovely thing to celebrate because I think we're all kind of making doing mending a bit, a bit more um, again these days, uh, which, you know, I've never really stopped doing that. I've always been in favour of that. So, uh, yeah lovely way to celebrate it and absolutely serendipitous that i had planned anyway today to finally get around to having a go at that little mending loom so um this is the um little mending loom that i got from a company um based in mainland china and it's a company called uh, vip cross stitch so they do all sorts of things as well as cross stitch um, and I got quite a few things that I've been really, really itching to get around to trying. I've just been so busy lately. I've, so I've had this for several weeks now. And uh, how amazing that I decided, right, I'm going to do that today. And then Jen came on the Discord and said, it's International Repair Day. That was, it was just meant to be. So let's have a look at this. So here's what I got in the kit. Let's call this the wooden part and this the metal part. <laughs> these kind of fit together like that around around your fabric. You get these strong elastic bands and you get a very long, um, reasonably sharp pointed, large eyed needle and you get this. Now, I've looked at quite a few tutorials on YouTube and I haven't seen anybody actually demonstrating using this. So I'm going to give it a go. They don't actually show it here either, but I think it could be a useful way because it's got this kind of hook that opens like that, like a latch hook. So as you push it through, the latch will open when you pull it back the latch will close and bring the fibre with it. So I'm thinking, and, and you, I guess you would hold it by this, it might be a reasonably speedy way to do it. I'll give it a little go just to see. Um, you've got the instructions, such as they are, <laughs> and um, and that's it. And, but there are lots of good uh, tutorials on YouTube and there seem to be different, slightly differing ways of using it. Some of the tutorials I saw didn't seem to take much notice of the fact that actually these little hooks are set up so that when you um, when you're threading them up and you're adding your warp thread you have them all, all upright, all in the upright position like this. But then when you put them that way alternate threads are lifted up. When you put them that way the other set of threads are lifted up at least that's how it looks to me we'll see how that goes i'm quite excited to try that because some of the tutorials use it and it looks really nifty and uh, some of them just don't seem to realize that's what they do so <laughs> i'm really keen to try that out i have never done this at all before so the only other thing i've got is a little pair of scissors um i've got um, a piece cut off some old jeans i always keep all the old uh, jeans that aren't fit to go to the charity shop um and then I've got, instead of using, I could use embroidery thread or sashiko thread, I've got all these lovely brightly coloured crochet cottons that I've had for quite a while. The other thing I want to try with these is tatting. And I also got some tatting shuttles from VIP Cross Stitch, the same company. Let's imagine I'm going to be, let's, let's make a hole. Let's imagine I want to, I've just realised this is so dark. The camera's not going to want to focus on it and that's better. So let's let's make a little hole here and imagine this is the hole I'm wanting to repair. For ease of demonstrating, I'm going to just cut a piece of fabric off because it's just going to make it a little bit easier to do it for for the for the camera. Right, so here's my little hole. One thing that uh, um, one of the people I was watching suggested is to just draw a little square where you want your your mended patch to be, just to help you keep it neat. If you're not worried about it being neat because you wouldn't need to do that obviously the square that you're mapping out has got to fit within the scope of the hooks that you've got i think is this a 14 hook one hang on two four six eight ten twelve fourteen yeah i think they come smaller and slightly larger as well I've even spotted a tutorial. I haven't, I've decided not to confuse myself by looking at it yet, but there's one that tells you how to do a ha hound's tooth weave with one of these, which would be fun to try. So I might try that after this, and uh, if it works, I'll put some photos on <laughs> so you can see. that. I've marked out the area that I want to be my patch. That's not really very straight, is it? But it will do for our purposes today. 
So the first thing you do is take this, oh, it's lovely and smooth that, this uh, wooden piece, which has got like a groove all around it. It's all one solid piece, so it's not going to break. And I'm centering that up behind where my mend is going to be. And then I'm going to take my first, I'll be using two elastic bands. I'm going to take my first elastic band and put it over the whole thing so that the band fits inside that groove that I showed you. This reminds me a little bit of um, when you make homemade jam and you put one of those little covers over the top. That's nice and uh, straight and reasonably taut. So now I'm going to take my, my loom part and I'm just going to slot that in here. I need to line my loom up with my area that I want to patch. There we go. And then I'm going to take my second elastic band and pop it over there and around the wooden bit to hold the whole thing together. I love how kind of low tech this is. <laughs> and apparently these things have been around since like the 40s or, or was it even earlier? Um, so if you're lucky, you might find one knocking about in, in your granny's workbox or something and you might have seen it and thought, what on earth is this? Well, now you know. <laughs> so the next thing, so this is a mini loom. So the next thing is to create the warp threads. Um, and so warp are the ones that go up and down. I think of it as warp speed, like on Star Trek, that's how I remember. They're the ones that go forward. And the, the weft threads are the ones that weave in and out. They're weft in and out, weave, woven in and out of the warp threads. So I think I'm going to use some different bright colours for my warp threads. And then for my weft thread, I'm going to use this natural colour. And see how that looks. Put all my all my hooks up right now so that I can get my warps warp threads threaded up. So I want all the hooks standing up right like that, can you see? So they can hook the thread around them. Um, now I don't really I don't need all of them. I'm only gonna need to come to I'll probably go up to this last one here. And these, uh, you can do really, kind of, you know, sensible, sensible looking uh, men's or really beautiful, brightly colourful, quirky men's, which is probably more the way I would go. <laughs> I love the idea of mending my uh, holes in my actual jeans with these. I'll be ripping holes just to, just to get, have an excuse to add the, the men's, I think. <laughs> so um, here's my line that I've drawn where I want to go up to. Um, so I'll go up to that hook. I'll go to the... Last but one hook on each side, I think. Well, I've got six different colours. I might as well use all six colours. Yeah, let's do that. Let's use all six colours in no particular order and just see what happens. So I don't need a hugely long piece of thread. It's only got, got to go up and down here. Uh, it's got a piece like that. There's no point in making it too long. It's more likely to get tangled. No problem threading the needle because the eye is huge. And hopefully with that point, it's going to be sharp enough to go through my fabric. Don't need a knot or anything. So you just um, put the thread in a little way below where you want to come up and start your your mend. So uh, I think I need to give myself a bit more space actually. So I'm going to say I'll start my mend here. And I'm going to bring up, and so I want to come up here, and this is my downward line. I want to come up, my first one's got to come up here, so I'm going to go in down here somewhere. Doesn't really matter where, because I'll be putting that to the back afterwards. And then I'm going to come up at that corner where I want my patch to be. Oops. Pull that thread through. I'm leaving myself a, a nice long end because I need to be able to pull that through to the back, thread it into a needle and weave the ends in when I'm when I'm done. And now I'm going up over this hook. Oops. Coming down to where my line is, my sketched out line, and just taking a tiny stitch across here smallest stitch I can manage with this big needle. There we go and now I'm going up 
and over the whoops, second hook like that. And now I want to change to a different colour. If I wanted the warp to be the same colour all the way along, I would just keep going. Um, but I want a different... I want a different um, colour now. So... And obviously I've got that. That's way too long. I don't need it anything like that long. And I think as I do these, I'm just going to push them to one side. To kind of hold them I think that makes sense to me and let's go on to the next color I'm not going to think about what color the what order the colors are in I just need to this is just a practice one so let's use a bit less of the thread this time I, with my pink thread now and in the same way there's my line where I'm starting my mend I'm coming up underneath here somewhere below it doesn't really matter I don't need to worry about these because I'm going to be pulling these through to the back afterwards although you could leave them as a fringe you know in which case I want, might want to think more carefully about where they're coming out so I'm just coming up at the line that I've marked pulling the needle through leave myself a generous end loop it over that next hook take a tiny stitch along the line that I've marked over the next hook and back out at the bottom oops well, I've gone twice around that one let's get that off there we go and I'm gonna again I think put those hooks to one side now I know those ones are done so I'm just going to work my way along now um, using all the different colours until all of those hooks are filled except for that last one there and I'll come back and show you when I'm ready for the next bit. Okay just coming up to using my last colour now going in below coming up on my on my line don't know how well I'm sticking to my line now but <laughs> leaving myself a tail looping it round that hook taking a tiny stitch along the line oops to put unhook my needle now <laughs> and this is the last hook just wrapping it around that last hook and uh, taking it back down below it has a bit of a tendency to bounce off the hook but it doesn't matter you can soon pop it back on it's probably not the neatest job ever but it's working I think I'm going to just trim these ends off to make it all a bit more a bit tidier and more manageable. So there we go, that's all of my warp threading done. And you can see already that it is going to work when you turn the hooks that way. Hang on, let's have a look. When you turn all of the hooks that way, this set of threads this these pairs of threads are raised up so you can easily get the needle in there and you, you're gonna be able to shoot it straight through like a proper loom really quickly and easily and then when you turn all the hooks the other way which is very easy to do you can see that the alternating threads are lifted up so it's like a mini miniature version of a headle on a, on a full-size loom. I think that's really nifty. It's such a simple little thing. I'm very impressed with that. So the next thing is to start my 
a weft thread and I'm going to do that all in this natural colour because I think that will be a nice contrast against the, the bright colours there. So I'm not sure how long I'm going to lead, need. I suppose I'm going to go back and forth quite a few times. Um, I don't want it to be too long and I guess I can always bring in a new piece if I need to. So that's about sort of 18 inches long. Um, maybe 40 centimetres, no more than that. It will it'll just get all tangly, I think. Now, I think this time I'm going to come in from the side to start my weft threads. So these are my warp. Now I'm going to do my weft threads. Um, I had drawn myself a line along there that I haven't stuck to very well. I've also got my vertical line, so you can see one there. Just about make that out. And one there. So I want to come up really, really close to this bottom line and right on that vertical line if I can, just to try and keep things neat. So I'm going to go in off to the side here. All of these, pe these pieces here and these pieces off to the side will all get pulled through to the back and woven in when I'm done so I'm not worried about um, what that looks like. <laughs> so I'm going to bring that thread out now close to that line. I'm going to leave myself a generous end again for that weaving in. All of my hooks are all over to the left now so they're creating so they're, they're acting like a kind of mini heddle, mini version of a heddle like you'd get on a full size loom and they're lifting up these they're lifting up alternate threads so if you can see they're lifting up the alternate threads there so i can slip the needle under really easily if i got close to the hooks down here they're still they're not they're not lifted up so much so it's better to put my needle in up here near the hooks and then bring it down so i'm going to go up here near the hooks i'm putting the blunt end of the needle in first because if I put the pointed end in it might catch on my threads and then I'm going to just put it all the way through oops don't want that in there <laughs> pull this thread all the way through but not pull it tight I'm going to leave it in that kind of arch shape because that just gives it that just leaves it kind of relaxed enough that when I tamp it down it's not going to pull the edges in. So then I'm just going to put all of my hooks over to the other side. Now this is so satisfying look. Oh. <laughs> and then I can put that needle back in there. Tamp those threads down. Oops. And then I'm just going to take a, a tiny stitch up this vertical line that I've marked out. Just a tiny, the tiniest stitch I can manage. There we go. Pull that up. And now I'm ready to Put my needle through again, up near the hooks. Bring it down to make sure that's really that previous one is really tamped down nicely. Pull it all the way through. Put my hooks back to the other side. Take my little tiny stitch. I'm trying to follow, I'm going to try and follow my line that I've marked, but. I'm not a tidy person by nature. Tiny stitch. Oops, put my needle back through tamp down that previous row and then keep on going. Move all the hicks, hook, hicks, <laughs> all the hooks back to the other side. 
take my tiny stitch I'm just going to tamp down that previous line carry on going through push my hooks back to the other side take my tiny oops, stitch up along that line I mean, you don't have to have a nice straight line you can have a, you know <laughs> you could just make the lines deliberately wavy and crooked and I think that could be fun as well or just leave fringed ends everywhere you know I think there's all sorts of possibilities with this yeah I quite like that you can tamp down and then pull through kind of in one step I quite like that I'm going to try this other hook in a minute just to see how that works I'm going to do a couple more rows keep tugging on my on my warp warp threads just to make sure that stays taut but not too tight you, you don't want it all to get you don't want these to get too tight at the edges and start pulling things in you just you need it to be reasonably taut but not not pulled over tight I think I'll get the feel for that more as I go along or oh, remember to take my take my stitch because if, if you were doing this with um, a full-on loom you'd have like a comb thing that you pull down and I'm sure there's something that I could use to do this with as well I just for the purposes of this I want to do what I can with just what's in this kit I have to say I am very impressed with it I love this idea I love the idea that these have been around for so long as well I wonder how many people have got them knocking around in their mums or their grannies work boxes and don't even know what it is you know because I wouldn't have okay I'm just gonna tamp this down now and unthread this needle and just try the hook just to see how that works it's gonna get more awkward as I get up here to get this up through I think I guess it, it can't be impossible because people do manage it okay so if I was going to use this hook then I would put it through from this side and pull it through uh, perhaps if I turn that at the last minute it opens the latch of the hook put the thread around it pull it back through and that automatically closes that latch pull it all the way through but then you've got to re-thread it into the needle to take the little stitch so mm, I'm not convinced about that hook and as I said I couldn't, didn't find other tutorials using it and there's nothing about it in the instructions there it doesn't even show a picture of it so I feel like if you were doing perhaps if you were using it for doing weaving that you didn't want to be attached to the fabric just for doing a little piece of weaving it would be more useful we'll have a bit of an experiment so watch this space now I'm thinking that this is going to be this thread that I've got for my for my weft thread isn't going to be long enough to do the whole job so that but that's oh I forgot to tamp down part way that's fine because that will give us a chance to find out how you <laughs> how you bring in a new piece of weft thread so I'm going to carry on till I've used this up and then when I when I'm ready to join a new piece I'll come back so I think what I'm going to do now is just in the absence of any instructions for this common sense <laughs> take my thread through like that and out at the side and I can the same as with these I can pull that through to the back once I'm done and weave all of my ends in let's just go back through and tap that down there we go and now I'm ready to bring in a new piece I thought just for fun let's try bringing in an, a piece of the colour thread to see how that looks you could do this with stranded cotton with sashiko thread and you could do it with very fine thread as well if you've got the patience <laughs> I've lost that line that I drew all together now I can't even see it anymore with my old eyes <laughs> Now I've come in from that end, when I finish that end, I don't think it matters. Just need to turn my hooks though. So that I'm now going over this one. Okay. 
I think the more I do of this, the more I will get a feel for it. And I am dying to try some of the other clever things that I've seen people doing. Like that hand's tooth check absolutely fascinates me, that idea. <laughs> this is a long way from perfect. I clearly need a lot of practice, but for a first time, it's proving to be very easy, really relaxing and fun to do. I'm absolutely thrilled to bits with it. I'm a bit worried about how it's going to go as I get nearer up to here and it's going to get more difficult to get that needle in and out again. I think it's going to be quite pretty with the colourful um, weft. So I'm going to carry on working now as near as I can get up to here. I think it's going to get a bit more awkward doing that as I go along. Um, we'll see. And then I will come back when I'm ready to take it off the loom and finish off. Okay, just come into the um, last little bit now. So I thought I'd show you this because it is a little bit awkward and I don't know if there's a better way of doing it. If anybody does know a better way, do tell me. Um, but I've managed to just take my tiny stitch there, but I've had to go off to the side to be able to manipulate that, this huge needle through. I guess you could just use a smaller needle, would help. But it's nice to just have the one big needle that I can also use for the tamping down and everything. And it's just, yeah, it's easier just to have this one needle in my hand the whole time. So I think this is the last one I can possibly get through now. And I'm now actually going to probably go to the pointed end of the needle, I think. Yeah. I'm not actually left handed, but it's going to be easier just to, especially for the camera, just to do this with my left hand. So I've covered my I've covered my little initial area. Now, <laughs> cute in it. I definitely need to. I definitely need more practice. But you know, for the purposes of of this demonstration and just to have my very first go at this, I'm very happy with that. Um, and I'm quite looking forward to trying some more things. <laughs> I'm just so pleased this happened on Nas International Repair Day. <laughs> So now this is going to be a little bit tricky. I just need to get the bands off of here so I can take the loom off of my work. That's the first one gone. And I think I'm going to try and take the other one off the back so it doesn't tangle up with my threads. Whoops. Now be easier to have these all more sort of upright. Carefully take that off, not too difficult. Um, so there are different options here. At the moment this is attach the fabric here and here and here but at the top it's just open. So you could do this as a little decorative pocket and I think that would be really cute. Can you imagine that? Especially on, like, say on a little kiddie's jacket or on a little, little denim bag or something, if you just left it as a pocket and then it popped a little, <laughs> little felted animal in there or something. How cute would that be? So if you wanted to leave it open at the top as a pocket, all you would need to do at this stage is just tug on the, the warp threads to just close up those loops at the top so if I just do this one just start doing it can you see that one's just pulling down and you just pull that till it's all nice and snug and neat there but I don't want to do that I want to pull it through to the back and do a proper a proper kind of mend for this one so actually this one I've now pulled out here I probably shouldn't have I should have kept that on my needle hang on basically what I would have done if it wasn't so awkward is is do my my little stitch in and back up in my little tiny stitch up the up the line that I've been doing all the way along but in this case I've just taken it to the back and I'm going to bring my needle up again now just a little tiny way further up so I'm doing exactly the same thing really that I've been doing all along it's just in, in two two steps 
And now this time for this very last row, I'm going to go in and out again, over and under, over the ones I went on under last time, exactly the same way, only this time I'm going to just catch a tiny stitch of the, of the fabric at the same time. This one, the thread went under, it's going to go over this one now, and then under, so it needs to go over this, over this thread, under the next one. But when I go under the next one, I'm also going to just take in a tiny stitch of fabric at the same time. Quite difficult to do for the camera, but so I have gone over this thread and under this one, taking in a little tiny stitch of the of the denim. You can see the the tiny stitch there. So now I'm going over the next one. I'm going to go over this thread. And I'll show you a bit better. Over this thread and under this one. Over this one, under this one. Exactly the opposite to what I did in the row before. So I go over this one, under the next one, and as I go under, I'm just taking little tiny few threads of that uh, base fabric at the same time. And I'm just going to keep tamping down that last, that previous row as well. So uh, I hope this is going to be easy enough to see over this thread, under the next one, with a tiny stitch into the base fabric again. And I guess when you get used to this, you could do it all in one go, but I'm doing it one stitch at a time just because I'm, I'm not used to it at the moment. Just coming to the last little bit now. I went under this thread last time, so I'm going over it this time. And instead of coming back up here, I'm just going to leave my thread at the back and fasten it off. And you can see there's just a little row of stitches along there. Ideally, that'd be a nice little straight row of stitches, but it's me. So you can see now there's just a little row of stitches catching every other thread. And now I can work my way along and pull gently on all of these warp threads to just close up these little loops which is, I'm hoping, going to be very satisfying. I don't want to pull too tight because I don't want to um, pull it in too much. But There we go. That's not too bad. I've not kind of puckered it. I've not pulled in the edges too much. It's far from perfect, but it's my very first go. I found that really satisfying to do, really quite easy. And it would actually be a, um, a reasonably hard wearing mend, I imagine. So let's try. So this is the idea now is you would pull all of these ends through to the back um, to uh, fasten them off out of sight, which I'm not going <laughs> to sit and do now. I'll do that. I'll do that off camera. But as I said before, you could um, just make sure they come out in a really nice straight line and just leave them dangling. Just have that. I think having the threads dangling would be fun as well. But what a nice little. Obviously, you can see where the circle was where I pulled. We can't see it too well. You can in real life. Yeah, where I pulled it tight over over this. But, you know, you would just give that a little press, perhaps a little steam. And just to get rid of that. You know, I don't think you'd notice it. Isn't that how cute is that? I absolutely love it. And it even occurs to me that it could work as one of my uh, as, as one of my stitchery swap ideas as well. It could be really fun. Do something like that on, on my square. It's almost the size of, that my squares would be. And then do some fancy stitching around it. That could be really fun. Mm, got me thinking now. Um, so I just want to get my little, my little thumbnail that I always like to get. There we go. There's my little thumbnail. <laughs> I am so pleased with that. I'm really chuffed to bits with that. Not really taking me very long at all. It's my very first go. You can see I do need to practice, but I'm going to enjoy having a bit more of a play with that and um, um so thank you very much to vip cross stitch for sending me that that loom it's been really a fun to try it out i'm going to leave a link to vip cross stitch below let me just check how much it was a minute so i can tell you it wasn't expensive hang on a sec here we go so this is the vip cross stitch um website i think it was in this was in amongst crochet and knitting tools section so uh, yeah, oh, it's that, and you can see it's only four pounds seventy six. They sent to different countries. Um, they've got New Zealand and Australian dollars there. They've got euros. They've got United States dollars. 
Polish, Netherlands, they've got all sorts of European countries there. So I think it's South African. I think they will send anywhere. They're based in mainland China. If you change, so if I wanted for one of argument, I wanted to change this to Norwegian krona. I can just click on there and it's 6425 Norwegian krona. <laughs> four pounds, four pounds 76 is, is nothing, is it? Let's have a look in. So in United States dollars, it's $5.79. Oh, look, then they're showing it on um, knitted stuff as well, of course. And look at this with all the fringing left either side. I love that. I think it looks beautiful. Really, really excited about this. OK, so I'm going to go back to the... Yes, thanks again to VIP Cross Stitch for sending that to me. I've really enjoyed trying it and I will carry on enjoying experimenting with it further. Um, I'll do a few more exper experiments with it and um, post them in, in the discord community and, and and the facebook group um if you're interested in in having a look so um thank you so very much for joining me today i hope you enjoyed that let me know um are you doing anything to celebrate international repair day <laughs> i think jen in discord was going to repair her slipper <laughs> oh, it doesn't have to be just about stitch repairs does it it's just that that's what appeals to me okay so i i'm gonna i'm gonna go now and go and do a bit more stitch happy happy repair day <laughs> Uh, thanks for joining me today and I'll see you again really soon.